Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Dr. Dustin Portella, 208 Skin Doc. Today we're talking about alopecia areata. This is an autoimmune type of hair loss. The most common presentation are circular patches of hair loss in the scalp. Alopecia areata is something that will affect almost 2% of the population at some point in their life. Most people that get it will recover quickly with proper treatment. There are other types of alopecia areata, however, and that can include alopecia totalis, which is complete loss of the scalp hair, or alopecia universalis, which is loss of all of the hair all over the body, including the eyebrows and eyelashes. Some of the common treatment methods include topical steroids, which you can use at home. Topical steroids are applied to the areas of hair loss in order to help tamp down on the immune system, which is attacking the hair follicle. In the clinic, we may do something called steroid injections, where we take a dilute concentration of steroids and inject that into the area of hair loss. This is a bit more effective than using a cream or a solution steroid that you apply at home, but it does come with needle pokes, which can be uncomfortable. There are additional immunotherapies like squaric acid. Squaric acid is an irritating substance which is put on the scalp at very low concentrations, and the goal is to create a little bit of a rash in that area because that causes the immune system to switch from attacking the hair follicle to fixing the problem in the skin. And when it's not paying attention to the hair follicle, the hair may start to grow back. It doesn't work for everybody, but it is something that can be done at home. There are new medications coming out onto the market. They are being investigated for alopecia areata, and these include medicines called JAK inhibitors or Janus activated kinase inhibitors. So they are immune suppressive medications. The oral forms of these medications do carry the risk of some side effects because it can lower the immune system. It can predispose you to infections and other things. So it takes a good conversation with your treating dermatologist to determine if something like that is right for you. Right now, they're only off-label uses. They're not approved for alopecia areata. There are topical JAK inhibitors now coming onto the market for things like atopic dermatitis or eczema, and they're being studied for use in alopecia areata. So that could be a promising area of opportunity because you don't have to worry so much about the systemic side effects because you're using it in a cream form. So it may prove to be a safer alternative if it shows that it is effective. If you have additional questions about alopecia areata, let me know in the comments below.